How is everybody doing? We are starting tutorial number 10, and this has a drill involved, and this time we're going to be learning about Live Trace. <clears throat> so I created a new artboard. I created it to be eight and a half by 11 horizontal, and we're going to import a, uh, a JPEG to work on. So instead of just copying and pasting, let's go to File and Place. So we go File, we're going to link this. So File, Place, and let's go to Desktop. And let's look for my little doggy right here. And we're going to create that as a link, click that, then Place. And now you see it's kind of attached. Look at it, it's walking around the paper, blah, 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 blah. So I'm just going to click it and then I'll move it. Oh, didn't want to do that. So I want to go my move tool, get rid of that little monkey first. Okay, so we're going to move this up here. And remember the very first, or one of the first lessons we talked about the difference between vector object and raster object, remember? Raster. So this is a raster. It's a JPEG. Um, and I think I forgot to use the word pixel in the first time. This is a pixelated image. A vector image is like a mathematical equation. I don't know how to explain it, but it never has rough edges. But if we zoom in on this little doggy here, see it's got like rough, rough edges. So we're going to do a live trace to get rid of that. Well, I forgot to mention also this doggy is on the D2L, so you can download it and work with it. Um, so now what we're going to do is, you know, we have it selected. If it's not selected, you know, that's what it looks like. But when you select it, it looks like that. And once you do that, you have a few options up top. And it says, you know, it says what the grayscale is. Um, it says embed, edit original. But what I really want to do is work with image trace. Okay, we click on the little arrow next to image trace, and we get a lot of options here. Um, high fidelity photo, low fidelity photo, three colors. So we're not doing this in color. We're going to add the color in Illustrator. So let's not worry about these. Shades of gray, we don't want because that gets too complicated. But uh, this looks potentially good, black and white logo. That's what we're going to do with this. We're going to make a logo. Another option is silhouettes. And I think um, even though we're making a logo, I think it's best to go with silhouettes. And I'll show you why. Let me, um, before we do anything, let's let me shrink this down a little bit. And I'm going to make a copy of it. And you remember how to make a copy. You put your finger on option till you get that little double arrow. So we're going to try. We're going to see what the difference is. So for this little doggy on the right, let's go image trace. Ah, I keep let's hit the arrow here, and we get silhouettes. So there, it's uh, it's image trace with silhouette. And we'll go to this one and hit the arrow. What I do the other times, if I click on image trace instead of the arrow, it kind of makes its own mind up. So let me um, click on the arrow and I'm going to do this one as a black and white logo. So the difference is it saves everything. It converts it to black and white. So it, this white is part of it. Now over here, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a silhouette. So it's only, it's only black. So the, what, what was white is transparent. It also seems like this black came a little thicker than that. OK, so now let's select both of these. And they are vectors, but the problem is you know, there's no points. There's nothing to edit. So what we have to do is uh, hit the option that says Expand. And that converts everything to points. So now they're both editable um, on this one here, the silhouette one. If we get the direct selection tool, we can, we can hit a point. We could do that. We could do that. Uh, make him a spiky dinosaur dog or something. The interesting thing is that, oh, one of the interesting things 
it almost looks like this is an outline around the shape of a dog, but the line itself is a shape. If that distinction is clear, let me get rid of those spikes. Let's go over to this one. And with this one, all the black outline is one shape. All the white on the outside is a shape. All the white on the inside is a separate shape. Now I'm going to select the white. I've just selected the white. And I'm going to delete it. So it's kind of like and there are advantages and disadvantages to both. Okay, so now we're going to, well, actually, let's work this. This dog is fine. Let's go with this dog. Let's get rid of this one. And delete. So this is going to be the, the doggy that wins the, we'll go with this one. Okay, now we are going to add some color to our little dog. So what we're going to do is get the direct selection tool and select the inside shape. And if you look over here right now, the white is the fill. So it's actually, it's colored in white. And there's no outline. Again, it looks like there's a black outline, but the outline itself is a different shape. So there's no outline. And that's, that's kind of good, that's what we want it. So we're gonna add some color. So instead of white, let's go over here, let's pick a nice, um, okay, how about make a nice blue dog? How's that good? And um, we need to select these areas too. So direct select here. And I put my finger on shift and touch this area too. Now I'm gonna get my little eyedropper and guess what's gonna happen when I touch the blue? Yep. So there we go, now we have a nice nice blue dog to play with. Okay, another way to add color is to use the live paint bucket. And that only works with uh, live trace, image trace objects. So what you want to do is you go under, um, over here, under the shape builder tool is the live paint bucket. Oh, actually we select it first. So let's select here, here and here. And then we go to the live paint bucket. And let's pick a different color. So that's one way, but it, that only works with image trace objects. Um, in Illustrator, just like in Photoshop, there's always 10 ways to do everything. OK, but I think I like him better as a blue. So I'm going to back up. Oh, it's not letting me back up. I'll just go back to my blue there. My paint bucket. Okay, and that's done. Now, um, okay, so now let's make the dog smaller and I'm not holding my finger on shift so it, the proportions don't say the same. It could be a chubby or a little wiener dog. Yeah, but let's keep him more the way he was. And then we're going to use this as the base for a logo. So I'm going to put two ellipses around it. So let me go to my ellipse tool. And let me um, make one ellipse like that. Let's make a Good. Move that ellipse over. Oops. Let's move it over. And now I want to duplicate that. And then make that. Yeah, hold my finger on it, keep the proportions right. And let's uh Slip both of these and let's align. Remember our align tool is uh, right here. Let's, now they're nice and centered. I think I'll want to make the center a little bit longer like that. That's good, I put my finger on option as I drag that just so it would expand from the center. That it wouldn't shift its position. Okay, and I think I want, 
let me select both of these. And I want to make the stroke a little bit thicker. Oops, wrong direction. Make it thick, thick, thick. Uh, uh, this way, yep, yeah. That looks good. And I want to group these two, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to move them up a little bit. So since I'm in selection mode, I just hit my up arrow. That's kind of good. Uh-oh, you know what? I don't like it going in front of the dog's foot. So I'm going to go to Object, Arrange, Send Back. That's great. Now I want to get my Type tool. And I am going to uh, type Blue Dog. So first I, I click right here. Let me go Blue Dog. And let me get an interesting typeface. What do we got to work with? So where are my characters? Window type characters. OK, here we go. And let me see. Probably. It's kind of phosphate. It's kind of funky. And you can spend the whole lot of time trying to pick. Oh, I like this. It's kind of my thing. Um, and it's interesting. This typeface, it's like the uppercase and lowercase both are the same. But I do like the way that looks. OK, now let's move the type down. What I want to do is make it, I want to make it fit in that shape. Actually, I think I want to. Um, let me change the color to make it maybe a different blue. So it's two blues going on. And I'll make it a little bigger. Okay, so there are some effects I want to do. And to get to those effects, I need to first select, get to get out of the type tool into the selection tool. So it's selected. Then I go effect, warp, and there's all these different options, fisheye. Uh, bulge, but what I want is arc, and you can control the amount of arc. Uh, let's bring that down a little, just a more of a subtle arc. That's okay, now let me bring it down. Oops, hit my arrows. I kind of play around with things a little bit. Um, I think I'll just, I'll just drag this corner to make it bigger. Can you do that? I'll select it again. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. Yeah, I kind of like the way that goes in there. Okay, that's good. Now let's uh, add the word furniture. So we go to the bottom. And furniture. Let me see. I'm going to add arc to that too. So I don't want to be in type. You know, in Photoshop, when you do these things, you have to edit them within type. But Illustrator is different. You got to do uh, and select and effect warp arc. And this time the arc's going down a little like that. It's okay. Move it over here. And let me. Uh, interesting when you hit these corners to make it bigger, it kind of loses the arc for a second. How does that fit? That looks too big to me. And I think I want to get more curve in there. So let me go back into effect, warp, arc. I knew if I could, yeah, that's good. Let's, uh, little tricky monkey. Okay, I think that works. Um, why is me, uh, get my eyedropper tool? It looks like it's black instead of, um, touch that color there. 
Oh, you know, it's interesting when you use the eyedropper tool, I was going for the color of the, um, of the blue dog, but all the characteristics come in. So the size of the uh, font came in as well, which is possibly fine. Let me now see if that fits. I need to get the arch a little bit more. You know, there is another tool where you can make type go along a path, but I think um, maybe we'll save that for another day. Apply new effect. Okay. Yeah, that looks good to me. Put my arrow up. I think that's good. And another fun way to add type is if you, um, let me get this, let me get out of there. If you go to the brush tool, say you have make it make this, this, make a line. And let's see, I'm gonna. Make a path. And then you go over here to type and you click on type on a path um, and you start right there. You can, yeah, so uh, yeah. Blue dog likes the blah. So you can type along any path that you create. So that's a pretty cool option to have. But you always have to, oh, that's an awkward, uh, that's not, very good right there. But yeah, that's, that's definitely a cool tool to play with and comes in handy at times. Okay, so that's fun to know. But so for now, what I want you all to do is sit like this and delete it. Just play around with your logo, play with different thicknesses of the ellipses. Maybe if, if these, um, you know, if, there is more space in there, the type can get a little bit bigger. So create your own blue dog furniture logo. And when you get done, post that up in the Padlet. And I want to show you one thing else before I close out. In, so here's another image that is placed. And you know, we can image trace like we just did. But if you go to object, image trace here, you can in one step make an expand. So the difference is that you didn't have the choices. You don't have any control. It kind of made its its own decision about how it's going to look. So let's go image trace over here. Let's say if you did, um, you know, it's silhouette, it looked like that. A little bit of a bolder line. If you did, uh, what would sketch start? What would that look like? Got a little more of the details there. So. I always like to have more options. I don't, I don't like to let the programs do the thinking for you. Anyway, uh, get cracking on your blue dog and look forward to seeing it up in Padlet.